Hey everybody, Mr. Milks here. And Monica too. Ooh, unit seven solutions, video number four. That's Quattro. Quattro. Page eight in our packet. This is we have had no practice at all up until here. It seems to be the status quo. We gotta get some we gotta get some base knowledge going on before we can start right. manipulating some stuff. First so. three, four videos are always that base knowledge. Yes. This one, we're gonna tackle the first topic, solubility, and what it is. Yeah. Okay. What is solubility? Well, tell me in your words real quick. What is solubility? Solubility is the ability of a compound or molecule to dissolve in a solvent. Usually that's water. So when I talk about solubility, I'm usually talking about, does this stuff dissolve in water? Yeah. Well, I mean, let's be honest. Water is what we call the universal solvent. Right. It's it dissolves the most stuff. stuff. It, yeah. It makes its own rules when it comes to solubility. Right, well, because it's polar, but it is mm. uh, covalent. Right. And it really starts to open things up for what it'll Basically, solve. Basically, you'll see what it, what we mean by universal solvent. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, solubility and solubility rules. Very important to determine the difference between these two big capital D words. Yeah, I mean, it, it, look at how close they're spelled. Dis, dis, oh, they have the same root. Oh, diso, diso, hmm, jeez. Ing, okay, that doesn't count. So LV versus CIAT. That's <laughs> really it. So I can see, right, how you could, you as students could get these two confused. And here's the real new chemistry definition. Right, I mean, but here, and one other thing you got going for it, you've heard the word dissolve before. Yeah, for sure. You might not have heard dissociate too much nope. outside of this class. And so here we go. Let's do it. So dissolving is when molecules separate from each other and Dissolving ends when each molecule is surrounded by solvent molecules. So if you think of your sample of matter as a big old chunk, right, but it contains little molecules down at the level, they're all piled to smash and squish together. When you put that chunk in the water, the water comes in and slowly picks and pulls it all apart. Yeah, the crystal structure breaks apart, breaks apart, but I'm left with molecules surrounded by water molecules. Right. So here's where it gets a little different. Dissociating is specifically when ionic compounds separate further into their constituent ions after they've dissolved. After they've dissolved. Right. So now this ends when all of the ions in that particular compound are now separate and surrounded by the solvent molecules. We'll make sure we draw some pictures of this in our belt works. Yeah. Because that's really a good place to do that. Because the sugar, the, the carbons, the hydrogens, and the oxygens don't break up. They don't when the fall sugar dissolves off the molecule chain. Right, that molecule of sugar stays together. It's so it just different. dissolves. But the salt, which also looks like a white powder and salt in water. Right. NaCl specifically. Right. 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 It's table salt. Actually does it one more step. The ions separate apart and they migrate around in solution, which we've seen in a previous unit, ionic versus covalent compounds. Right. It lets the water, the liquid, conduct electricity. Right. So dissociating is really important for electrolytes. I was just going to say, I've yeah. got a word here. Electrolytes. Let me put that up here. Electrolytes. And dissolving is really important for covalent molecules, both ion, uh, nonpolar and polar. Right. Polar and nonpolar dissolve. Ionics dissolve and dissociate. It's, there, it is the next step, guys. And it's really important that we know what dissociate means. So therefore, ionic compounds are electrolytes. Correct. Right. Because They're, they dissociate. They, and we've all heard of the word electrolytes when we talk about Gatorade. And guess what? It's got electrolytes. It's got some s dissolved salts. It's yes. di or dissociated salts in there. All right. So let's get into this famous saying that we use in this particular. Like dissolves like and what it means. What it means is polar solutes dissolve polar s in polar solvents. So that whole molecule polarity thing, you mean it actually matters now? It actually matters because polar is going to dissolve polar. And so you have to be able to look at a molecule, I guess, and decide if the molecule is polar or not. Yep. And then as a result, look at the solute's molecule structure and say, oh, will these go together because they're both polar? Yes. What if they're opposite? No. Correct. So let's see. So nonpolar is, of course, going to dissolve nonpolar. Right. So oil and water. They don't Ooh. dissolve. Well, and they don't, well, they're not miscible. Right. They don't mix. They don't dissolve. They don't play nice. They don't play nice because water is very polar and oil is very nonpolar. So like, doesn't, you know, like dissolves like. 
so it, that this like doesn't work. Don't play. Right. So let's do a little chart here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to do nonpolar solute with nonpolar solvent first. Should so this would be like a wax in some kind of oil. Right. And right. it is a special candle wax oil to color them. Right. To right. Them. That's right. If you ever make candles at home. You gotta buy a special kind of wax. You can't just use food coloring. No, it won't mix. It won't mix. You'll get white wax and little droplets right. of liquid color. But so nonpolar solute will dissolve in a nonpolar solvent. So it yes. will dissolve. Right. What about what do you think about a nonpolar solute in a polar solvent? These opposites do not play nice. These go. opposites do not attract. <laughs> well, I, opposite oh. ions attract, Ooh. but these type of opposite natures yes. do not. Right. Now, the polar, polar sol solute, the most important one on the planet, is water, H2O, yeah, mixed with a nonpolar solvent. And no, I got that backwards. Polar solute would be something like, uh, wow, gosh, polar solute. Uh, well, something that's ionic would be pretty polar. Uh, it's the most polar that there is. Now, let's forget put, the example. Where you put it, yeah, so, so you Polar solute would be salt. Um, uh, table ammonia. Salt. ammonia. Well, table salt will not dissolve in alcohol because alcohol is nonpolar. Right, but we're talking about not ionic, we're talking about polar salt. Well, but oh yeah, well to me that it's is the same. same. To me they're the same. But you're right. So let's go with yours. Ammonia. Ammonia is a polar compound. It will not dissolve in oil. Because oil is a nonpolar solvent. There you you go. can bubble all the ammonia gas you want through oil. It's just gonna come bubbling out the top. There you go. But if you take that same ammonia and Put start it bubbling it through water, water you get a dissolved solution. It, the bubbles would go into solution and you would make a solution. Probably. Correct. Which is probably the ammonia you buy, which is a solution of a ammonia. Cleaning ammonia. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Pure ammonia would definitely hurt you. Okay. So now this ionic solute, let's go to table salt and ACL. This is like the most polar thing. Ionic compounds are like the extreme of polar. Right, right. That's why I went there, but I shouldn't have because I need to do it here. So if I put it in something like a, a rubbing alcohol, it's not going to dissolve. Because if you put salt in oil, in oil, too, like vegetable oil, there you go. It's not going to dissolve. We Rub, could probably, we rubbing have, alcohols are slightly polar, isn't it? Uh, if you get the the high end stuff, the, you know the problem is is because rubbing alcohol it's got water in the it. store is mixed with water, so right, you got to get it really concentrated. Yeah. So ionic compound table salt won't dissolve in oil. vegetable oil. Right. So, so that we could do right in right in class. Mm -hmm. We could do that in class, but it will of course dissolve in water, which is very polar. So the only exception that will not dissolve in polar solvents are some nonpolar solutes. Because there are some polar solutes that will dissolve in water. Well, because water is polar. Nonpolar solutes that will dissolve in water. Ah, and that's where water is the universal solvent. Right, like carbon dioxide and oxygen. These are nonpolar molecules, but they will dissolve in water because water is special. Water is really special. So, we so like got any other notes here? No? No, we good. Next page. Ooh, this is your favorite. I like this. All right, so, table F. This is um, a thought process. It really is. It, it, yes. it, it's a problem-solving process. It really is. So he's going to break it down into where it's alike, Mr. Monaco is. I just want to talk as he's grabbing a pen. I want you to see that on the left-hand box of this thing, the whole big left box, is about soluble compounds. And an exception to soluble will be insoluble. And then the right-hand box is talking about insoluble stuff, and in its exception will be soluble. Do you see how we can get a little bit mixed up? But watch how easy he's going to make this for us. Ready? In the middle, the exception to soluble will be insoluble. And then insoluble, of course, is insoluble. So anything that is in this area is going to be insoluble. Meaning... Solid. solid. There you go. Because so what did I just draw? Um, a funnel. A filter funnel. Because <laughs> solids, which are insoluble, will get stuck in the in filter. filter funnel. Right. Right. So everything in the two center columns here are solids. They won't dissolve in water. Okay. This is, again, notice aqueous solutions. These right. are not solutions of alcohols. These are water plus things. Right. Now everything on the outsides will. will. They are in the soluble column, so they're soluble. All group 1 ions, if your compound has a group 1 ion, it is soluble, aqueous. It's going through the funnel. The exceptions to the insoluble rule are aqueous and going through the funnel. Right. So this is really how it works. We're going to have to 
practice this to make yeah. sure we can figure it's it out. It's part of their first pogo. Yep. And there's a good example using homework, will do, won't do, don't, did do, don't do. And then there's the next step, which is take that same thing you figured out with the homework, pogo, and apply it to here. Right. Don't let the scary symbols and ions get you, make you run away. It's the same analogy of will do, homework, won't do, homework. As will dissolve, won't dissolve. There you go. There you go. So just change the code words and you're good to go. Yep. Let's see how we actually do it. Though. Well, this is a lot of fun. Uh, uh, so, <sighs> Mr. Milch's little brainchild. Yeah, well, this is, I like to make you guys do all of these things out if I can because this is really good review. You're going to have to. Right. You're going to have to do that. Right. So this is a double replacement reaction. So first things first, before we decide what the precipitate's going to be, we need to figure out what the products are going to be. And if you remember, the first metal in every compound is always what charge? Positive. And the second negative. is negative. So basically, the positive of one is going to hook up with the negative of the other. Right. Right? So the barium is going to hook up with the sulfate. Remember how we did it with the A, B, plus C, D kind of thing? It's going to form A, D, C, C, B. Right. So that's basically what this is going to do. So if I take that barium and hook it up with the sulfate, that's going to be one product. Right. So you need to draw it over as that product. Correct. You need to write that. This is a D plus, and I bet you the next product is going to be B, C, something like that? Well, it's got to specifically be C, B because the C is going to come first. Right. That's positive. Mm -hmm. Positive piece has got to come first and then the negative. So I'm going to make magnesium chloride. Right. And there you go. That's how you know it was a double replacement. And all of these in this unit are going to be double replacements. Nudge, nudge, nod, nod. Double replacements. Now the fun part comes. So ah. table F. Now I'm going to give you some advice because we've been doing this a long time. I'm only going to be concerned about the negative ions at first mm -hmm. in the products. Right. So let's take the first negative ion, Mr. Monaco. I so, see a chlorine ion. And now you're going to play the matching game. Where is chlorine on this chart? C, mm, chlorine, chlorine, mm, mm, mm. Reading a C, down. but not a CL. Keep it going. There's a CL, but it's got an O3 attached That's to it. That's chlorate. Different. Not it. There's a CL by itself. That's but it. Mister, this is CL2. Well, so what? So what? It's still chloride. Right. We call that magnesium chloride because chlorine is a halide. Right, and I'm looking through here. I don't see chlorine anywhere else. So circle it. So I must it. be talking about halides. And so all, what do I do? Is I look halides. to the top of the column. All halides are soluble, except when the first ion is AG, PB, PB or HG. Two. Okay. HG. And do and, and it, do I have that there no, in front I've of got, that chlorine? I've got MG. So MG is not an exception. Which means so therefore, that this stuff would be soluble. Soluble. So this particular material is going to be in solution, and you're not going to be able to see. And it should get a Q after it. Should. Well, they really all should have that. Correct. Right. All right. So can we erase that here so we can do the I next one? I think I can. Sweet. Because now we're going to take. We didn't find one, so we got to take the next one. SO4 is our next negative species, okay, so and now let's just hunt down SO4. Where's SO4 with a two negative above it? All right, so now all SO4, S, but we're not talking about it because it's not SO4. we got to have SO4 play in the matching game. Okay. So we're talking about a sulfate here. And look at the top column. All sulfates are soluble, soluble except unless the first element is, is calcium, ceruleum, strontium. Oh, strontium, you got it. Barium. Uh -huh. Oh, look, or lead. And, and look, that BA sodium. is us. BA, that's BA. So this stuff is an exception to soluble, which means that it is insoluble. So what we want you to do is put a big old S underneath this thing. We're going to write, no, I. My bad, bad. It's a solid. It's a solid. We call it insoluble. Right. We so circle it sometimes. We put a box around it other times. Yep. You just got to identify old, right. which one's insoluble. And you can do that with an S in parentheses afterwards because yep. that tells us it's a solid, meaning it's not soluble. Yep. Or you could circle it, write insoluble. Heck, write on another line. The barium, BASO4, is not right. dissolved. Right. Know. Will precipitate. 
however you do it, you're going to have to identify the one that is insoluble. And this would be, in this case, the one that would be insoluble. And we use table F to predict it. And right. then in lab, you could go ahead and do it. Do it. Right. Or vice versa. Do it first and figure, figure out, out which, which one, one it is. Because honestly, some of the reactions we're setting up for you in lab are not going to produce a precipitate. Right. And some will. And yeah. And, and there's some will produce two. And some are, one or two <laughs> is going to be a little tricky to see. Yeah. And you're going to maybe say, hey, I didn't see a precipitate. And then you're going to go and do this and say, hey, hey I should have. Should have been one. Why yeah. didn't I? And then we can maybe play a little bit. Okay. So, so there's see a, what else you got. a run through through table F. And now we've just got to practice. And the lab is your practice on this one. Yeah. Well, we got some. No, we got lots of practice in the okay. baby pen. Eh, but some. Enough. I mean, there's five or so um, double replacement reactions. Expect at least one on a test. We're going to review <laughs> naming, how to name some of these things will yep. be in there, and whether or not it's soluble. So we'll be attacking its negative ion to see if it works. Bottom line of the day is you got to know about using table F to predict if something is soluble or if it is not. True. And then you also need to not forget about what that word dissociate means. It's a mm -hmm. big one. Those are probably the two biggest things of this video hey, that could trip you up. Quick question. Are insoluble compounds, do they dissociate? Um, no, because they are not soluble. Do they dissolve? They're insoluble, so no. Gotcha. Only things that can dissolve will dissociate. Will dissociate. That's why we dissolve first. Most of the stuff on table F looked like they were ionic compounds. So those would probably, if they're soluble, they have also probably dissociated as well. Right. Right, so they got to dissociate to in order to make this double replacement reaction happen. We got to get down to the ionic level to make it work. Right. That's true. There you go. So I we're done. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>